Welcome to Read Your Comics. Today I'm looking at Judgment Day by Joe Orlando. This book is a collection of EC stories um, illustrated by Joe Orlando. It's um, collected by Fantagraphics in their series of artist books. got a cool cover it's very like kind of fabricy. it's a you know nice like fantagraphics always puts out like nice stuff um, this has like kind of a, a library feel to it uh, it's just standard comic size it's not you know oversized or anything um, has a nice spine and there's like a whole series of these that have these like matching spines so if you this is the only one i have right now but i think i have uh Opened up Pandora's box to go down a rabbit hole and get a bunch more. Anyway, I picked up this one because of the story in it, Judgment Day, which obviously this book took the title of that. Judgment Day is an interesting story about an astronaut that goes to visit some robots on a, on a planet. But even more interesting about it is its place in uh, comics lore, EC, uh, and EC Comics particular, because it was the last story of the last comic that they published um, in the comic format. A couple more notes about this book. Now, there's a ton of stories in this book. This whole thing is not just the Judgment Day story. This has the, well, it has all of these right here. You've got the Adam Link stories iRobot, which is uh, another Adam Link story, not the Isaac Asimov. Um, there's some Ray Bradbury adaptations in here. Uh, most all of this is uh, scripted by Al Felstein. So you've got a lot of content in this book. The downside to this book, I would say, is that it it's in black and white. It's very crisp black and white, and it looks great. However... I'm a big proponent of Mary Severin and she colored all these originally. And a lot of her coloring techniques at the time were quite groundbreaking. So it's, you're kind of at a loss, not getting some Mary Severin on this. But aside from that, you have a beautiful reproduction of the black and white artist. So crisp and clean, you know, a lot of the old EC reprints like the Gladstone stuff, it, they're great to have, but they um, tend to be a little like blurry <laughs> from the low print quality of the time. Well, no, probably just what they could get. But really, I just want to look at this one story today, and it's on page 29. Lots of, lots of stories about robots. Judgment Day. So... It's, it's a short pay story. I think it's only about maybe 10 pages. Um, you have an astronaut landing and he meets these uh, robots. And this is where lack of color is important because these robots are supposed to be colored orange, which comes into play. So these robots were actually placed here by humans, I guess, uh, decades or even a century before as kind of an experiment. They have some AI and they were kind of put on this planet with the knowledge and resources they needed to thrive. And then this human astronaut was coming back to see if they were ready to be integrated in as essentially like their own uh, species in a way um, into the, uh, you know, galactic council or whatever they call it, republic. And it's pretty interesting. This one orange robot meets him and has given him a tour of the place and how you know, they basically have a democracy that they've set up on their own. Um, it wasn't programmed into them or anything. And how they have like a place where the robots are being built. And as they're looking at it, the astronaut notes like, well, I only see orange robots here. Where are the blue ones? And his guide is kind of shady, like, oh, we'll get to them. But it goes into a lot of detail about how the robots are made and the interiors and the sheathing and how uh, they didn't make any upgrades really in their time. They just uh, 
went with the design, the original designs that they were left with. So it, it only got to the sheathing part when they, you know, put their outer shell on. And then they would, then after they were done, they had to spend so much time working in the factory before they could go on to like pursue their own dreams. <laughs> So again, the astronaut asks, well, what about the blue robots? Where are they? And you start to find out that they live in another town and a different place. And um, they have to take like a transport over there because it's too far. It's too far to walk. And as they go, you start seeing things like this, like charging stations for orange only robots. When they get on the transport, they're like, oh, we sit in the front. And some of those things obviously are hitting close to, um, you know, civil rights issues of the 1950s. So they get there and they, now they see the blue robot and the blue robots live in more or less a slum. And you see like this one's even got, it's like sitting on a stoop with its, uh, head in its hands. Um, everything's a lot more run down. They have their own factory and like, there's just a grittiness to it compared to the nice, clean, sterile environment of the factory here. So as they make it, and the astronaut starts pointing out, he's like, notice the internal units, my friend. The same designs, the original designs, no improvement, no differences, exactly like yours. We, we know that, Tarleton. That's the astronaut's name. It is only here, my friend, with the blue sheathings, that a difference can be detected. But the sheathings are only outside coverings. The inside structures are no different than yours. The sheathings make the difference to the orange robots. So, you're seeing that essentially the orange robots discriminate against the blue robots. The uh, astronaut points out that you know, despite all your like education and everything, um, there shouldn't be a difference. And like, you need to like work on that. And the orange robot, he's really excited to be invited to this galactic, uh, council or whatever, but the astronaut essentially says, no, you aren't ready. And when he says why, and he doesn't really tell him why he's just kind of like, hey, you need to figure out why on your own. <laughs> I've already dropped, I've already dropped the heavy handed hints over here. You need to figure it out. So he gets on and he's like, the universe will be your, or what do you say? Uh, um, of course there is hope for you, my friend for a while on earth, it looked like there was no hope, but when mankind on earth learned to live together, real progress first began. The universe was suddenly ours. And when we learn to live together, the universe will be yours too. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, Tarleton. So then as we get the uh, rocket blasting off, heading back to Earth, and the astronaut removes his helmet, and he's an African-American man. That doesn't play quite as strong in today's time, but in 1953, this was huge. I mean... To have a black person in the comic at that time was just kind of unheard of. Um, and it was so unheard of that, well, when this, this story was actually printed twice. It was printed once in 1953, before the code. And then when they reprinted it after the code is when it suddenly became an issue. Um, so when they submitted this to the code, the... Uh, the person at the code basically told them you can't have a black person in there. And they said, why? And he said, you just can't have a black person. And, uh, they went off, um, Bill Gaines and, um, Joe Orlando and Al Feldstein. They were like, that changes the story. If you don't make it a black person, it ruins the story. And they were like, okay, well maybe just take the, uh, sweat beads off of him. <laughs> And, um, essentially they said like, look, we're going to go to the press and call you out on this. If you make us change this, um, that's when they said to change the sweat beads on him. 
And allegedly, Bill Gaines let out a F you and hung up the phone. They ran the story as is, unedited, and it was the last book that uh, EC Comics produced in comic form. Um, they would continue doing Mad Magazine and another ma- and another magazine format book, but this was it for comics. I mean, that was where the code ended up killing EC, and it was this was the final straw for him. A book that had already been printed once with no problem, and then uh, you know the code was trying to squash it. So I wanted to look at too. They actually reprint some reader comments here in the front about the issue. Judgment Day and Weird Fantasy number 18 precipitated an unusual amount of mail, and we'd like to devote the column uh, to publishing excerpts from the many letters as possible. We're very happy to report we received only one critical letter, which, as customary, we, uh, present, we present first. Dear editors, I am not prejudiced, so I was not offended by Judgment Day, but some of my friends were. They even went so far as to say those D blank N blank lovers. The North and South are like they are, so why not leave it well enough alone? Name withheld by request from Augusta, Georgia. So that was their critical one. And I was trying to figure out, he said, my friend said this. And then the quotes stop. And so is the person saying that the North and the South are are like they are? I I didn't quite get that. Um, It's not exactly fair because (laughs) there was plenty of prejudice going on in the North and the South at the time. So the story should resonate nationwide. It wasn't just a send this to the South to educate them. Everybody needed the education back then still do i'm a southerner born in north carolina lived over half my 15 years in texas and before moving this past summer i had never been above the mason dixon line i believe judgment day is the finest you could uh, the finest you have printed in your magazines to date well now he's living in maine congratulations to joe orlando the artist, to Al Felstein, the author, for the best story ever printed by EC. We have never read a story in a comic with so much meaning and moral. This is your answer to critics who say your mags are harmful. Joe and Tony Mancini uh, and Dick Mazzagelli, I guess that's how you say his name, in New York City. This is to compliment you on turning a delicate problem into a shocking document of justice, a masterpiece of pictorial literature. If Oscars were handed out for comic magazine stories, this one would be the winner. If everyone in the world could read this story, maybe then we could live in peace and harmony. Words fail me. The horrible horribly accurate picture of the human race is drawn with bold unmistakable strokes it is a yarn that first convinces you to its believability and then begins to tell you the truth about yourself in just as believable of terms the story stirred inside me god didn't put us on earth to hate each other to hate each other's skins all my life i've lived a firm All my life, I've had a firm belief in brotherhood, but seeing the state this world is in, perhaps a Tarleton visiting U.S. would set things straight. Anyway, they all go on with similar forms of praise. I think this one was one of the more interesting ones. Dear Mr. Gaines, we would appreciate it if you would uh, have about 35 copies of the story for our school. Our students would profit greatly from seeing the work of Mr. Orlando, uh, as well as benefiting from the excellent theme. This is in New York City. I want to make a Florida joke right now. I realize you have been 
uh, battling in the sea of comics to try to do better things. You have you have certainly succeeded in Judgment Day, which should be required reading for every man, woman, and child in the United States. You've done a splendid thing here and deserve the highest accommodation. Ray Bradbury. And then it goes on right here to say that they actually sent this school 50 copies. Um, some other interesting notes in here. I, I guess there's a discussion with uh, Wally Wood and uh, Joe Orlando about this. I guess um, Wally Wood had just had a story that had a black man in it. And they had like a, a friendly competition for art. I think now Orlando kind of studied Underwood, but you know, eventually kind of came into his own. And, and so he drew this picture and was like very proud of the, the, what he felt were like the accurate features. Um, and he said, uh, Wally Wood was like, well, I just drew a black man in my story just recently too. And he was like, you drew a white man and colored him, colored him Brown. He's like, this is a black man. And it is well rendered. It's probably the best rendered picture in the whole thing. Um, a lot more detail as far as like uh, going for a more photo realism kind of look here, as opposed to a lot of the other stuff that's in here. I mean, none of the robots or even the astronauts has this kind of shading and the sweat glistening like stars is a nice effect as he goes back home to earth. So the, overall, I mean, this story alone is worth getting this book for if you don't have it in some other format. Um, but I do like this book in general. Like I haven't read everything in here yet, but I, I do like the black and white. I miss Mary Severn colors, but I do like how just crisp it is. It has a lot of this kind of uh, material in it too, with some like background history stuff. If, I mean, if you like reading that stuff. All the stuff in the front, the introduction, is all quality stuff. So anyway, that's it for Judgment Day. Until next time, read your comics.